What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn about an external Python module called Mitoshi that allows us to have Excel-like graphical user interfaces in our Jupyter Notebook so that we can edit and view and display and analyze data frames instead of writing commands manually with pandas. We can use this graphical user interface that looks a lot like Excel to do it in an easier way. So let us get right into it. Alright, so for this video today, you're going to need to have a Jupyter Notebook environment set up already. So either Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab, both is fine. But I'm not going to go through the installation process here because I already have tutorials on how to use Jupyter Notebooks, how to you to install and set up Jupyter Lab, what it can do and all that. So if you need a fundamental tutorial on Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab, just go to my channel, type Jupyter in the search bar, and then you will find the respective videos. We're going to start with a plugin installation right away. And for that, we need to open up the command line and we need to type pip install. And the interesting thing here is that we're not installing the plugin itself or the module itself. Uh, we're installing the installer and then we have to call the installer to install the respective Mito environment or Mito sheet environment. So what we do is we type pip install Mito installer like this. And then we need to call this installer to install the respective environment. So we type Python dash M Mito installer and then install. Now I'm not going to run this command because I already have it installed and I don't want to mess up anything uh, because it's working already and I don't want this to change. But this is the command that you have to type. And then one more command that you want to type. Uh, I'm not sure if that is the default setting, but if it's not, you need to type Python dash M then Mito sheet now not Mito installer, and then turn on, of course, with a space, turn on data frame button like this turn on data frame button. And this button is essentially what you have when you display, for example, a data frame, a pandas data frame in your notebook, it's gonna uh, show you a button show in Mito or uh, open in Mito or something like that. And then you will be able to do that without typing commands. So if you want to have that, you have to type this command in the command line as well. And then I'm going to navigate to the directory that I'm going to be working in today. And I'm going to start Jupyter lab. And once this is done, uh, in my case here, I have prepared a CSV file, because we have to work with some data uh, that we have already, or you can also make up your own data. But in this case, I just have the simple iris data set. Um, just some C a CSV file it doesn't really matter which one you take, you can download any data set that has a, a proper format. So just a simple comma separated value file. And then we're going to start a new Jupyter notebook here. And all we need to do essentially in order to trigger Mito is we need to type import pandas and then we say data frame equals um, actually let me add an alias here pandas spd pd dot read underscore csv and then in my case data dot csv and uh, then I need to display the data frame and here you can already see C full data frame in Mito. So I only have to click that button in order to trigger uh, the Mito graphical user interface. But before we click on that button, let me show you that we can also trigger the same thing by just importing Mito sheet and then typing Mito sheet dot sheet and then data frame. So this also works if I type it like that, you can see this opens the Mito sheet environment, I can now delete this again and click this button here. And you can see this also opens up the Mito sheet graphical user interface. Now, the first thing that you probably want to know is how can I get this into full screen, obviously, you can click here uh, on the upper right corner to open this in full screen. The reason I'm not uh, s such a fan of the full screen mode is because it's sometimes buggy. So sometimes as right now, as you can see, I'm trying to click on the buttons here, and they don't open up anything. Whereas if I close the full screen, I can uh, access the menu. So I don't know if this is a problem with my installation, or if it's a problem with Jupyter lab and the combination of me to and Jupyter lab. If uh, you have the same problem in an ordinary Jupyter notebook, I don't know. But for that reason, I'm going to not uh, be in full screen most of the time here, uh, even though the display is going to be probably a little bit small in this case. But maybe I can just trigger my browser full screen. Okay, doesn't seem like that. So let's keep it like that. But essentially, you can see now this Excel like graphical user interface that allows us to explore 
and to also change this data frame. And the cool thing about this is that it doesn't just do it, it also produces the lines of code necessary to do it. So for example, a very simple thing, let's take this line here, this cell, I can double click it and I can change the value from uh, from 3.6 to, I don't know, 4.5, for example, I can press enter. Now the value has changed. And if you scroll down here, you're going to see that this produced some code, some pandas code, df at 22, this feature is 4.5. So whatever I do in Mito sheet up here happens and is turned into Python code down below. And for example, what we can do here as well as we can add a column, I can rename that column to my, uh, my new column like this. And you can see down below here, this also happens. I inserted a column, I renamed it. So this is what we can do here as well. I can also go to um, a column that already exists and change it. So I can say meters divided by 100, which is the same as centimeters, but a different way of writing this. And now you can see also this produces the code. Uh, what else can I do? I can also say, for example, uh, where was this? I can not double click, but I can was it format? Yeah, I can format a column so I can change the data type. For example, if I change this from float to int, I can truncate the decimal places. This is one thing that I can do. Um, I can change it to string as well. I can play around with the data types here. I can sort ascending and descending order here. You can see also all the code lines are produced. Um, and I can also add filters. For example, Let's stop the sorting, I can uh, say we have values over three, we have uh, values below three. So what I can say is I want to have a filter that, uh, okay, this is a string. So we have to change this to a float again. But I can say now that this value has to be greater than three, for example. And if I apply this filter, you can see that I don't have any values below three. If I change this to four, you can see that I even have less values. And this applies also to the whole row, so not just to the column. Um, and I can do the same thing here with strings, I can uh, use some functions like starts with, even though this is now not a string, but I can say starts with, I mean, it is a string, but it's a number. So I can say start with four, and then it's four. Uh, the first character has to be four, or I can say four point, and then this also works, obviously. So a ton of different uh, different things that we can do here. Let me just change this again to float. Um, one of the most useful features, in my opinion, is to just plot graphs simply or easily. I can just click here on graph and I can select the data frame. I can select the chart type. So, for example, I can say I want to have a histogram of the feature uh, pedal length, for example. And then this produces a histogram where I can go and change, uh, I, I can go and choose another one. And then I can also say, okay, give me a different color depending on and I can choose a feature, for example, the class here. And this will give me a combination. Uh, now maybe we can go with a scatter plot, where the x axis is the pedal width, and the y axis is the pedal length. And then I also have the color being determined by the class. And you can see how well these two features here already separate the data. So this is something that you can do here. You can also have multiple data frames opened up. And you can see everything I do. I mean, the graphs not but everything I do, as I said, is uh, also tracked down below. And we can just repeat the code to um, we can also put it in a function and do the same thing over and over again, if we want to. So let's go back to the data frame here. Uh, I can delete columns, obviously, I can import uh, data frames, or I can also export this data frame. So if I want to export this data frame, I can just go and say, okay, this is now a CSV file. And I want to export this DF file, download CSV file, I can save it. Um, now, I'm not gonna save it right now. But you can save it uh, wherever you want, you can then load it again with pandas, and then you can um, you can see the changes. And this is this is not a tool that allows you to do anything that you cannot do with pandas. It's not a magical tool that now has a lot of functionality. It's just a graphical way to do it. So you don't have to type pandas dot insert pandas dot at pandas dot s type or something like that data frame dot s type or something like that. You can just go ahead and do this in a graphical user interface way. Uh, there is also a pro version, I'm not really sure what it does. Um, but yeah, here you can also see the history. So at the end of the day, um, this this is not a feature rich thing, you don't have a ton of features here, but it's just a different way to access 
uh, the functionalities of pandas, at least the most basic ones. Now, I'm not sure if you can join data frames here. Uh, you can merge data frames. So let's see if that works. Let's try to um, how can we do that? Let's go ahead and open up a new cell. And let's say df2 is just df as well. Uh, or copy of df like that and then show df2. Maybe uh, no, it doesn't open it. So let's go ahead and say to CSV data to dot CSV something like that. And then up here, maybe I can load it so I can import the file data to dot CSV. And now I have it open up again. And here I can now merge the data frames. And you can see uh, that this is actually quite a sophisticated merge. So I can choose here the data frames, I can choose the key to merge at. So um, a key, let's go with the index. I mean, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense to merge because we have the same data frames here. Uh, but essentially, I can say a left merge or a left join, right join, inner join, outer join. Uh, basically, left and right means keep everything from one data frame and um, whatever is there from the other data frame that fits into the um, into the data that we have from the one data frame, the inner is just get the intersection. So just the rows that are contained in both data frames, uh, the outer is basically everything. And then you have a bunch of other options as well. So this is how you can do that you can just uh, type which columns you want to keep from the individual data frames, and then you just merge. And alternatively, you can also concatenate data frames. So uh, here you have inner outer join. Um, and you can just say, okay, df, data two, for example, and then um, ignore existing ind indexes. Okay, this is also a possibility. But yeah, all this produces again, some code down below. And uh, yeah, that's essentially what I wanted to show you I wanted to show you that there is this tool Mito sheet, which allows you to uh, work with pandas data frames in a graphical user interface way. But I want to emphasize here, I don't recommend doing this all the time. So I think it's a nice, nice to have Thing. I think it's a nice tool to play around uh, with. But I think that if you are into data science, if you want to really become a good data scientist and Python programmer, you should not rely too much on graphical user interfaces, you should um, know the pandas commands and use them on a regular basis so that you don't forget about them. And uh, yeah, this is just a nice little extra to look at as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.